if you're looking at buying a home, it's very likely that you're going to be looking at around a 6% interest rate for your mortgage. And the home that you're looking at buying, the seller right now likely has less than a 6% interest rate on their current mortgage. So I'm going to show you a strategy you can use to take over the seller's lower interest rate. And this is called a loan assumption. So right now, around 90% of mortgages or people with mortgages have an interest rate below 6%. So if we take a look at this chart, it shows the different interest rates that people have uh, as a, a percentage of outstanding uh, mortgages. So we can see 90% uh, of people have less than a 6% interest rate. And so, of course, it'd be great if you could take over that lower rate, especially if somebody has a rate in the 4% and lower category. So this is how it works. You can take over the seller's mortgage in certain circumstances, but it does have a little bit of red tape around it. It can be a little bit difficult. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. A lot of people talk about this as, oh, it's super easy. Just take over the seller's mortgage and get their lower rate. It's not as easy as that. I want to show you how this works. Okay. So just as an example, though, let's take a look at the payment difference um, between a rate that you might get now versus if you could assume the seller's mortgage. So if we looked at an example of a $400,000 purchase with 3% down over 30 years, we could see that the average uh, assumable rate in the U.S. right now is 3.5%. Okay, so if you got a rate today, let's say it was around 7%, you'd be looking at a principal and interest payment on your mortgage of $2,581. Now, if you could assume an interest rate that was 3.57%, then all of a sudden your payment is going to be lower by $824 per month, bringing you to $1,757. So if this is a strategy that you can use, you absolutely want to take advantage of it. And if you're looking at buying a home, I think it's going to be really smart to use this strategy um, to see if this is something that you can do. In a lot of circumstances, it might not be something that the seller is willing to do or able to do. Um, but if you're able to make it work, it could save you a ton of money in the long run. So um, here's the big catch with this, though. Okay, when you are assuming a mortgage, you have to pay the difference uh, between the purchase price and the seller's current loan balance. Okay, so let's run through an example. Let's say that uh, you're looking at buying a home and that home, let's say, is listed for $400,000. Okay, now you could get a traditional mortgage, do maybe 3% down on a conventional loan and purchase that home. Okay, but again, you have the current uh, interest rate that you would be paying. Now, let's say that the seller has a $300,000 mortgage balance. And this is something that you could figure out by asking your agent to ask their agent, um, hey, we're possibly looking at an assumption. Is that something that uh, the seller would be open to? And um, what is their current loan balance? And I'll, I'll, I'll show you step by step what you can do and how to make this work when you're looking at homes. So in this difference here, the seller owes $300,000 and they're asking $400,000 for their home. So that's a $100,000 difference effectively that that seller is going to be profiting. Now, that money has to come from somewhere, right? Um, so when you're assuming a mortgage, a lot of people think, well, I'll just take over the seller's mortgage and I don't have to pay for anything. Well, in this instance, sure, you might take on the $300,000 loan that would then go to you. You would take over that mortgage, but the seller then is actually expecting $400,000. So there's a $100,000 or $100, difference that somebody has to cover, and that person is going to be you. You have to be able to cover the difference between the seller's mortgage balance and the purchase price that they want. In addition to that, there also are closing costs, just like any other purchase. You're still gonna have things like a title search, most likely. You're gonna have taxes and homeowner's insurance, recording fees, possibly a transfer fee, um, as well when you are, uh, or transfer tax fee um, when you're looking at buying uh, this home, okay? Now, some lenders may offer what's called a closed-end second trust deed up to 80% value. So basically what this means here is this difference between the seller's mortgage balance and the list price of the home, for most people, you're going to expect to need to come up with that difference in cash. Now, if the seller doesn't have a ton of equity in their home, if that difference isn't huge, then it might be a small amount that you have to bring. However, in circumstances like this, it could be $100,000 if that's the difference between the mortgage balance and the list price you may have to bring that amount to closing as a down payment to cover the difference. 
Now, there, again, there are some lenders that will offer um, basically a second mortgage to help you cover that difference, but they usually still are expecting you to come with 20% as a down payment. They're not gonna give you the full amount um, to cover that. So this is up to the lender if they're going to um, allow this to work or not. And you can't just go get this with any company most of the time. What you'll have to do is check with the seller's current mortgage company and see if they offer um, something like this to help you cover that difference um, with a loan if that's something that you want. So there's different types of assumable mortgages and it all depends on what the seller has. Okay, so assumable mortgages all center around the seller's mortgage. So in an assumption, a loan assumption, you're not getting your own mortgage separately. You're seeing whatever the seller has and you're taking it over. Okay, so what you need to do is understand what loan the seller has. And again, we can just ask the seller, hey, what loan do you have? Because we might be interested in a loan assumption. So um, if the seller has a conventional loan, it's very likely that an assumption is not going to work. Most conventional loans cannot be assumed. There are some adjustable rate mortgages that can be assumed, but in most circumstances, if the seller has a conventional loan, odds are an assumption is kind of off the table. However, if the seller has any government loan, an FHA loan, a VA loan, or a USDA loan, then those are usually assumable. Okay, FHA is gonna be the most common uh, type of loan assumption. VA is a little bit of an outlier. Um, what's interesting about VA loan assumptions is that you know if the seller has a VA loan, um, it's very likely they were a veteran uh, or maybe a surviving spouse. And if you're not a veteran, you can actually still take over that VA loan, which is great because VA doesn't have any monthly mortgage insurance and usually has really low rates. So even for non-veterans, um, you can still take over that loan. Now, the seller, uh, their entitlement is connected with the property, which doesn't hurt you at all. It just could be something that the seller might not be interested in um, because for the seller, if they let you assume their loan, then it might make it difficult for them to purchase another home with a VA loan. Um, and then USDA also can be assumed in certain uh, circumstances. And just keep in mind that USDA guaranteed and USDA direct have different rules for assumption depending on what the seller has. So ultimately in here, you're trying to understand what kind of loan does the seller have? How much do they have left on their mortgage? And what interest rate do they have? To first see, is loan assumption even something that's viable that could work in this situation? Is the interest rate low enough um, that it's valuable to do the assumption? And then also, is their loan balance versus the purchase price not too significant to the point where you won't be able to come up with the down payment to cover uh, the difference there. So here's how this works. Now, first, um, don't just plan on assuming, okay? I know this sounds like a great strategy and I think what a lot of people will do is they'll say, I'm not buying a house unless I can assume. Um, if you count on that strategy, it's very likely that you won't be able to buy a home um, because I know these sound uh, somewhat easy, but again, there's that big difficulty there if we need to see what kind of loan does the seller have? Um, is the seller's lender willing to allow the assumption? Is the seller willing to allow the assumption? Because a, an assumption can take a little bit longer um, and can be frustrating for sellers to go through that process. And then also, do you have the money to cover the difference? So if you're just planning on assuming and not considering also using a normal loan, um, then it may be difficult for you to buy a house. So what I would consider have a solid buying plan that includes a normal loan. And then if an assumption is possible, if it's something that comes up as an opportunity, absolutely explore it, but don't make it your number one priority for buying because it's not extremely likely that um, an assumption is gonna be something that you can move forward with. It's kind of more of, if the opportunity arises, let's take it, but let's have a more effective plan that is way more reliable than just um, hoping for an assumption. So here's how we're gonna do this step-by-step. Step. Number one um, is when you're looking at buying a home. So let's say you found the home that you really like. Again, you're already pre-qualified, let's say with a conventional loan or an FHA loan, you're ready to buy that home without an assumption. So let's say you find this house. What we're gonna do is we're gonna explore if an assumption is something that we can do. So we first wanna inform the seller and say, and you can either do this uh, by yourself or you can have your agent um, do this on your behalf. And you wanna inform the seller or the seller's agent to just say, um, hey, we're, we're considering if an assumption is a possibility. Um, so could you tell us uh, what the loan type is, your current loan type, 
right? Because we, if we go back to that chart that shows us the types of loans that can be assumed, if it's conventional, it's very likely we're not going to be able to assume it. But if it's something like FHA, that might be worth it. Also, we want to find the seller's uh, current loan balance and what their interest rate is as well. We want to see how attractive is this as an option to assume that mortgage, okay? Then what you want to do um, is you want to go ahead and make an offer on the home. So make an offer to purchase. Now, if you are planning on an assumption, um, if a assumption is, you know, if it's a, let's say an FHA loan, they have a really low rate and maybe that spread between the balance and the purchase price isn't too big, then what I would want you to do is plan on a 60 day um, close. So basically what that means is you get under contract to purchase the home and you're not planning on closing in the contract for 60 days because a loan assumption can take longer than a regular purchase. Um, and the main reason why is just because loan assumptions aren't something that mortgage companies really can make a lot of money on. And so they don't have huge uh, departments staffed um, for assumptions. They really only have a few people doing loan assumptions, so it can take longer to get through that process. So expect a 60 day close, have that in the contract. Um, and then also be ready to use a normal loan if the loan assumption doesn't work. I think it's smart to go ahead and start moving forward with the regular loan while that assumption, or you're working on that assumption process, um, just to make sure uh, that if the assumption doesn't work, you're still able to purchase that home. Again, remember the assumption is more of the uh, best case scenario, but still plan on being able to purchase that home and being able to purchase that home with a regular loan if the assumption doesn't work out. Then what you're gonna do from here, if the seller accepts, you want to apply with the seller current mortgage servicer. So the seller uh, has a mortgage with a current mortgage company and you have to apply with them. You can't do an assumption with any other lender. The assumption has to be done with the seller's current mortgage company. They're the one who's going to approve the assumption and approve you as a borrower because they still have to make sure that you can qualify for the payments on that loan. Okay. The seller's mortgage company also, has, they have to approve the assumption. You can't just take it over um, just because the seller said, here you go. The seller's mortgage company has to approve um, you on that. So then from there, the hope is that the seller's mortgage company approves you, and then you can close on the home as normal. Now your new loan effectively is you now have responsibility for the seller's mortgage. They took it out of your name. It's now in, or they take it out they took it out of the seller's name and now the mortgage is in your name and then you covered the difference between the purchase price and the loan balance either in cash or possibly that lender allowed you to get some sort of loan to cover the difference. Again, not likely, but it's something that you can explore and you can always ask the seller's lender about. So some pros and cons here. Let's just go through some uh, quick pros. Um, number one is you have lower interest rates. Of course, if right now you could get a 7% interest, interest rate, but by assuming a mortgage, you could get a 3% interest rate or a 3.5% interest rate, of course, it's gonna be worth it to go through with an assumption. Also, because of a lower interest rate, you have lower monthly payments. Um, you have potentially lower closing costs. Um, with an assumption, you may run into less uh, origination fees, for instance, on that. Um, and then often, an appraisal is not required on a loan assumption um, because you are just taking over that current mortgage balance and not getting a higher mortgage balance. Um, so some cons that we need to consider here is, is, again, it's limited to certain loans, for instance, conventional. It's very unlikely you'll be able to get that assumed on conventional. You also still have to qualify based on the lender's criteria, and they get to set their own criteria on those assumptions. Um, they're allowed to be more strict than a normal purchase if they want to. Um, also, you may have a po uh, possibly a higher down payment to cover that gap. Again, someone's responsible for covering the difference between the seller's loan balance and the purchase price that they're asking for, and usually that means you're gonna have to come up with that difference in cash most of the time. Also, there's a longer time frame to close. Um, like I mentioned, is you know, uh, there's not these huge departments that are doing assumptions because mortgage companies don't really make money on assumptions. Um, there's rules on how much lenders are even allowed to charge on assumptions. Um, so it's hard for lenders to be profitable on a loan assumption. Often they lose money on loan assumptions, so they're not going to spend a ton of time and resources making sure that it's the smoothest process and the quickest process. Um, but it's worth putting up with uh, the slow speed 
and then also some of the clunkiness if you can get a super low interest rate. And then also one big con too is the seller may not want to. The seller doesn't have to agree to it. Um, they don't have to allow the loan assumption to happen. Um, the seller can just say, I want someone to purchase this with a traditional mortgage because I don't want to have to sit and wait through this long time frame um, for possibly at the end it to fall apart. That's very fair and the seller is allowed to do that. And a lot of sellers may want to take that option of going with a borrower who may close quicker than you might be able to close with a loan assumption. So if you're looking into a loan assumption, again, you're going to want to follow those steps, reach out to the seller's mortgage company. However, if you're looking at just a regular mortgage um, and you want to get started with getting a pre-qualification, our team works in all 50 states. Um, you can go to winthehousehelove.com slash lender to schedule a call with us at a time that works for you. We'd be happy to help you figure out the best loan type for you. And then if you're looking for for a real estate agent. Um, Home and Money has a real estate agent network of super helpful agents who follow up with you through every step of the process and guide you through every step of the process. Um, you can get connected with an agent at winthehouseyoulove.com slash agent.